hear me? Yes. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Mar and I created an animation company here in Japan, well, a studio. And today instead of uh, just me working on commissions or originals, we're actually talking with Simon B. We're having a sort of informal interview where we'll have around half the time with check everything works, half the time will be focused on me asking questions to him and like having a conversation and the rest of the time should be for you for like actually having questions on the spot so feel free to ask questions from any time actually like I'll be collecting them um, and we are on Twitch and YouTube by the way so mm, let me prepare the screen <coughs> so and call Simon, of course. Hello, so he's with who we will be talking with. Okay, there we go. Where are you? So, talking to him right now to call him. It's having a second, and that's why these things are live, it takes a bit. Ah, I have a sign in my head, I'm trying not to say. <laughs> I'm also a bit nervous. When I do interviews, I get very nervous, actually. Because I want to get like all the information right and be nice with the host. Like, I'm, be, I'm the host. Be nice with the guests, be nice with, be nice with everyone in the chat. Have fun myself. Learn things. All right, so calling now. Um, There you go. Hello? Um, Hello! Welcome! <laughs> Thank you for Hi. your time, Simon. I think we can hear you and so on and so on well. Yeah, I see the bars and everything. So, thanks again for being here. Uh, I hope you're ready. I'll be asking you some things, but please feel free to just like go around. Like if you feel like something would be a spoiler or NDA, like mm -hmm. just, just shut up. It's fine. So. Yeah, sure thing. <laughs> no, so, I don't think I'll spoil anything, though. <laughs> Let's try not. No, no. But uh, basically, the people who's listening to us, like now or in the recording, is mostly. I mean, this interview is intended for people who's thinking about joining the industry of animation. People who may be thinking to going like working from home, working as a freelancer. They're still learning, or they are already professionals who just like to see. I listen to other point of views, so actually whatever we say, I think it will be very interesting. So, yeah. enough of the introductions, please, uh, can you tell me about you? Like, tell us about you, like, uh, how you became sure. an animator, and so on. Yeah, so, uh, my animation story, <laughs> it depends on how far back you want to go, but I, I started, um, I started getting into animation a lot more around the time that the internet started popping off a lot more. Flash was really big, mm -hmm. so, you know, uh, Flash cartoons, all that started getting bigger and bigger, so I decided I wanted to join in on that. Mm -hmm. Bought a tablet, started making some very bad <laughs> Flash animations, but uh, that's how I start. like, that's, that's my first step into the door. Um, well, I mean, the start of life, I guess. Yeah, like, so basically, uh, before even... I believe you went to college to study animation, so before yes, even that, right. you were trying things on your own then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, back in the day, I think it was just very... There was this, this, this sense of community and this idea of, like, people trying things for the, for the sake of trying things. Mm -hmm. It was a nice time, albeit... Uh, yeah, just sharing with friends, fast. sharing online. Yeah, a lot of the resources that we were using, we didn't have any, well, people weren't sharing books or there wasn't any online resources yet. So the most, the most we got in terms of animation tutorials and resources were, you know, other, other people just trying to learn it on the spot and sharing what they learned from studying proper books or watching things. Mm -hmm. it, was an, it was interesting. That's cool. Time, there's because... a lot of like self-learning even if there's a lot of courses online or even like oh, yeah. essential ones. Like there's a lot that's self-taught oh, yeah. and practice and practice with other people. So on. Mm -hmm. we have a comment 
Wait, Simon sounds like a robot. Yeah, I was trying that um, oh, yeah. with the video, but I think that's like a microphone thing that then it gets mixed with my computer. I don't think we can fix it. However, let us know if, like, as long as you can understand him, we take it as it's fine. But if there's some like disturbance, really, please let us know. Thank you, Zunis, in the chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, maybe if I get closer <laughs> to the microphone, it'll. It'll help a little bit more. I'm not sure. <laughs> Thank but, you very uh, much. We'll it's try. In case, in case that there's something that's actually not good enough for our audience. Mm. All right. So we just talk about how you get got into practicing animation. Can you tell us about right. how you got into the industry? Like you studied in the college. Yes. How? What, yeah, what was so, the step? Yeah. So, so I am a shared like I'm a graduate from shared animation, animation here in. Oakville, Ontario, in Canada. Um, actually, a recent graduate. Actually, no. It's coming up on a year since graduation. So I graduated <laughs> last year. <laughs> yeah. I graduated last year. Um, it's been working since before the end of the graduation, if I'm counting uh, freelance work. And so far, I've been working at say three I, i've worked at three studios so far since graduation those are titmouse furley both of those are in vancouver and i'm currently employed at yowza in uh on in ontario in toronto so were these three studios you work with them at the same time in some cases or was it like you do for one you stop go to the other was it oh, no, overlapping hmm? yeah these are all contract work so this is like one after another um, mm -hmm. I tried to take on, I tried to take on uh, two contracts at the same time, but uh, that that was a lot more, a lot more difficult than I could handle. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you cannot do it. It's more like you would not suggest that, like or um, time management. Yeah, I mean it really depends on the person. If they're the kind of person who likes to, you know, do a lot of work or likes the hustle, then that I think that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, you know, I, I, I. Yeah, there's like no like. Sorry, I was sorting me to the, to say like there's no exclusivity contracts, mm -hmm. for example. You could do it, but in your case, um, yeah, you just choose to go one after the other. That's cool. And you yeah. have experience with various, and you just graduated. Um, did you have like when you tried to enter? Did you have like to show a portfolio? Uh, go through tests. How was it? Yeah, so for for us, for our for our college and our graduation, mm -hmm. um, Sheridan is pretty popular when it comes to animation. So we have a uh, we have a industry day. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a day where recruiters come in and we show off our animation or our work, and then you know they they conduct interviews afterwards if they like what they see. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got. A decent amount of um, interviews after graduation. Uh, well, I mean, after you know, my, after the showcase, I mm -hmm. got contacted by a couple places, and uh, I, I settled on Furleaf first for my proper contract. But, mm -hmm. uh, for Titmouse, it was more of a freelance thing. They couldn't hire me on as a full-time at the time, but they mm -hmm. were offering uh, a position for freelance. Yeah. And I decided to take it because it was um, hand-drawn animation. It always depends on the, actually the projects and what the, the animation mm -hmm. company needs in these cases. In all these cases, you were working from home or did you um, actually go to the study, the studio? Wow, English. Uh, I was working from home the entire time. Uh, and I have been working from home since. Mm -hmm. Is it something you are looking after, or would you have rather it a working studio? Um, <laughs> Interesting question, I... because you haven't tried. <laughs> yeah, no. I guess I wouldn't really know. Well, I mean, I had an internship before. No, that's four companies. Oh, shoot. Um. The, the the previous summer before graduation, I had another internship at a smaller uh, studio for YouTube channel for Donix. Mm. So I had a bit of experience in studio, but that was more a lot smaller than 
you know, proper large studio. Um, if I would choose between the two, currently right now, I probably not too keen on the idea of going in house. I mean, but wait, like just thinking that everything's safe, obviously. Mm. That's the that's the okay, filter yeah. we're going through. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. if there was no health dangers or mm. society <laughs> things going on right now, um, yeah, so that um, makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I might. <laughs> I don't know, really I, just, I just appeared, the question just appeared to me, like, at the spot right now, so sorry for mm. going for that. No, no, it's okay. Yeah, yeah I have to think about that. that. Depends, depends on, on my mindset, mindset at the time, and, like, depends, depends on how I would be thinking. I think I, think I, would, I would still prefer, prefer to work from home for a bit. Hmm, I see. So what do you like from work on from home? Like, we're, we're getting into subject right now. Hmm. Working from home has been pretty nice, all things considered. Uh, one of the benefits, the, the, one of the big benefits I find is just, you know, having work done for the day and then also being home when work is done. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I guess my, why I wouldn't be too keen on uh, the going in-house in studio would be because from where I'm situated right now, to get from here to Yaza in Toronto, it would take me about three hours by commute. So it's not an ideal amount of time to be spent on a train, I find. Yeah, absolutely, not daily. And at the same time, what you mentioned is freedom. Like, in this case, you could mm -hmm. actually go with tra like with a train, even if it takes long. But if not, you would need to like move, or the studios you would consider would be much... Yeah much less, like much fewer options. So yeah, I guess mm -hmm. the, that's also a very important um, like good thing about working from home. So can you tell us about how does your usual day look like? Uh, like work day? Usual... Yeah, yeah, work day is like, like, I treat it like a typical work day, you know, I wake up, I, I you know, get food and then sit down, start working. Mm -hmm. um, for however many hours it takes for me to finish my scenes. Mm -hmm. or, um, but I try and restrict, I, I try and keep it to like a certain amount. I think it's very easy to get distracted or lose track of time and then go over a bit because you don't have your peers around you to tell you, hey, the day's over, or you feel like you want to continue working on something even though uh, it's it's going a bit past the amount of time that mm -hmm. in studio you would be working. Yeah, in studio it's it's lunch time. Like people is like, hey, do we want to grab something? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. Is there some uh, tips for like stop working? Because there's always more work to do, right? Like sometimes you mm -hmm. yes, you did finish the cut, so you're sort of done, or you need to wait for a mm -hmm. correction. But when that's not the case, that you have like a cat or a word that takes you like several days, how do you stop yourself from keep working? How do I stop working? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I can be the best example for this because I do tend no, like, to We're talking about bit. like real, real examples. Like, don't worry, like just... Mm. I'm yeah, the worst I'm... example at that, to be honest. Like, you're giving advice to me. I'm very bad at stopping. No, very no, of course. Okay. Um... It kind of has to come a lot to be stopping stopping yourself from working kind of has to come down to a bit of honesty i find mm -hmm. um we would all like to believe and like i certainly at the start like to believe that i'm i would just be like one of those workhorses that just gets work done constantly consistently but after a while that that tends to weigh down on you quite a bit and it's not a really healthy lifestyle to Sorry. keep up, I find. Mm -hmm. You, um, in the worst cases, and I've been in some of these worst cases where life just looks like wake up, work, eat, go to sleep, and then you continue that cycle over and over again. I've had a lot of misery from that. I don't recommend 
um, trying to overextend yourself too much to a point where you only focus on work. Do you have like a goal to rest in that case? Like for example, like you lately I go to read. It's the one mm. of the only things where I really don't focus on anything else because you're inside the book. Yeah. Reading is really good, I find. I've been picking that up a bit too, actually. I was reading before uh, we started the call, so... <laughs> is it like a fiction or like a non-fiction this time? Uh, this, this was a financial book, just to help. Uh, I see, I see. Uh, my business teachers recommended it to me. But uh, reading, I find, yeah, that's a, that's a very big one I think is good. Anything that gets you away from the screen for a bit. I do like to play games every now and again. I think those are fun, but they can take, take you know, uh, you, you spend a lot of time on a screen mm-hmm. and a bit habituated to it. I think it's always nice to try and break away from that every now and again. And actually go outside. It's one thing, oh, yeah. people, going outside even if it's just in the front of the building, if mm-hmm. you're lucky enough to have some sun. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Well, lucky enough, if, lucky for me, it's been pretty nice weather lately, yeah. so... Lucky enough, healthy enough, so of course, let's not mm. forget that there, the world, there's happening, there's things happening in the world, so mm. considering that, um, if you can go outside and things like that. All right, so let's get back into the topic of uh, animation itself. Um, I'd like to know, like, what's your, like, what's your pro- work process look like? And I'm very interested to know, because you have, you mentioned you've been working on you have experience in four studios. So yes. can we talk about like, what's the process since you, like before you start a cut, like what's going on before you actually get to go through your computer and go do that cut and then how's like the review process going? Like how does it work like, for other people to review it? Do they review it mm-hmm. <laughs> at all? Like tell me about these details. Yeah, sure. So. Obviously, every studio is different, but I think a couple of things are, um, there are a couple of things that transfer over from studio to studio. The main thing being revisions or um, having to, you know, fix things. Um, when I was at Titmouse, the, the process was pretty straightforward. It was, a, um, you would get your scene, you would have the boards in there, and then you would pose it out. Mm-hmm. and once those poses were, like key poses, mm-hmm. let's say, um, once those co- once those key poses were approved, and they send you off to do start doing animation, you would obviously, because this was hand drawn at the time, so mm-hmm. the animation you would show would be roughly done, and if those would be approved, well, I mean, if those were approved, then they'd send you off to do tie downs for those. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's yeah, like it's so quite that... a like a very um, what's it like? It's a lot of steps to review everything, right? Yeah. Like um, from my experience, like anime studios, it's unless you're there in the studio itself and you have like your senpai next to you, like your let's say mentors next to mm-hmm. you or co-workers and you check all the time it's more about like okay you get the storyboard and then like go for it animate it <laughs> almost <laughs> like of course like there's a different step like there's like okay do you do the layout and then mm. you check you do the key animation and you check then you go the second key so it's quite straightforward compared to when you were uh experience mm. so that's quite interesting uh how yeah. is it about getting the cuts like can you pick from the storyboard or can you ask oh, yeah. for things? So, so they, they do provide, provide you with like, um, they provide you with the boards, they provide you with the story or the episode or the cut, um, just helps to keep everything consistent mm-hmm. and well, I mean, it helps to know what you're going to be animating. You don't want to end up with one scene that kind of has a different, uh, tone when it comes to the animation mm-hmm. when it comes to the next one so they do provide the they do provide the Leica for the entire uh, episode mm-hmm. and in that case because I believe you're working with a team like technically mm-hmm. it's more animators working in that like episode or whatever the the full file story is 
Uh, mm-hmm. Do you communicate with the others at all? Like, like fight for the cut you want? Uh, I'm not much of a fighter, so I can't really, I can't really vouch for that. <laughs> but I, I have been told multiple times, like if there's a cut you want, you know, ask, like just raise your hand and let us know, because you know, it's like, you, they, I, I believe that a studio, <laughs> I believe that they probably want to, uh, you know, give a scene to someone who wants to work on a scene, mm-hmm. as opposed to giving them something random that they don't feel too strongly about. Mm-hmm. Of course. Um, so in this case, you mostly talk to like the production assistant or like someone on top handling the mm-hmm. cuts, right? You don't talk to peers in this case, or do you? Um, not too often. The only times I ever, I, I really talk to peers and it's not, I, I'd like to change this, but, um, the only times I've talked to peers have really been when it comes to hooking up shots or if I need an asset from their scene that they're working on and we need to exchange it. So, unfortunately, at least for me, not as much as talking to peers. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean... I mean, it, it makes sense. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. Hmm, interesting. That's... Uh... In that case, um, like, sorry, because I'm, I'm half pending off the <laughs> what you're saying and the, the screen and everything. So sorry if I mm. lose a bit my track. Um, um, so is there any other communities or other people you talk with, though, like inside the same uh, industry? Inside, inside the, the same, same industry. industry? Yeah. I would, yeah, I believe so. I mean, I graduated from an animation school, so. Mm-hmm. My friends, like, like a lot of my close friends, friends are all animators. <laughs> they all <laughs> work in different places. I see. That's cool. Yeah, and we're having this conversation as well. And yeah, yeah that too. <laughs> I was on Forky's. Uh, I was on Forky's podcast stream the other, the other week. Yeah. I wonder if he would be here, but anyway, uh, <laughs> it's been so nice. Like I was in Forky's. Uh, stream uh so for anyone who doesn't know porky uh he's he actually helped us in my studio once before uh he's been also in one interview this channel and porky and simon know each other that's how he knows i knew i get to meet simon they were like mm-hmm. on a stream talking while working and it was super interesting super nice point so you can check if you can check uh porky's uh twitch channel it mm-hmm. could be also like very recommended i can put it a bit later in the comments um or in the or in the chat so mm. it's good that we mentioned that yeah i would recommend it too very insightful person yeah. very helpful too yeah um so let me reply very quickly to the chat uh yes we should be streaming on twitch unless it's not working yes we are and oh do you mean simon are you streaming on twitch simon oh i am not streaming on twitch at the moment is it something you would consider? I might consider it. I, I've been meaning to actually, well, I mean, I, when it comes to working on things that are not animation, mm-hmm. maybe. Um, maybe animation related, possibly. Uh, just, you know, for fun. Mm-hmm. So I might consider it in the future if I manage my time better. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's something that it's very enjoyable, but then it's sometimes tricky because you need to see like, okay, what's the, what can you share and what can you not share? Mm. And then streaming um, depends on how sort of prof- professional you want to take it. If, for example, you want to set like, okay, same, same day of the week, every week, then maybe by that day, you already have done the part you could share or that it felt like sharing and by, and then you try to do something else for the sake of the stream. So it's a bit, a bit mix so it's something mm. that's very enjoyable just like okay i wanna i wanna travel talking to people so yeah really that is a difficult choice. choice i'd if, if I, I were to stream, stream i think i would probably, probably just do what i'd like to mm. it seems like, like a more of a uh, just a for fun kind of hobby I'd let me say. share with everyone like everyone is seeing i was showing your reels now on screen oh. and now i'll share share your twitter and I had, I'm looking for a specific animation. Yeah, this like lady has like dog ears. 
Oh, oh yeah. That's so cute. One. So that's uh, Simon's um, your original, I believe, right? Like, you did. It's, it's... That's right. Oops. Original, original animation, animation, but it is based off of an audio from uh, a YouTuber, actually. I see. I see. Yeah. yeah. As a personal project, just something I'm doing on the side, something for fun, and also I've committed to it, so I, I, and I'm enjoying having it finished. I think I've learned quite a bit, actually, off of it, so. It's looking very cute, very cool. Thank you. If anyone knows who that is, uh, do shout out in the, do shout out in the chat, because... Yeah. The, By the way, the, everyone, like I'm not awesome. seeing many many questions, so go ahead because soon we could start with the Q and A. Otherwise, we could just like talking from whatever feels nice in the conversation. But start piling up questions, everyone. Um. Okay, so we talked about. I mean, going mm -hmm. back of our conversation, we were talking about like telework in itself and something of the good perks is, is that you have more freedom to work for studios that actually are quite far away for example mm -hmm. uh what are the like the cons what are the struggles from working from home in the animation struggles? industry yeah, yeah. so, so i'd say the struggles from, from working from home definitely, definitely a big one is just, just not being around, around uh you know the the uh, a certain environment, you know. Mm -hmm. There's, There's a, a difference, difference when you're working in studio and you're surrounded by other people who are also uh, working their butts off as well. Uh, there's, a, there's a bit of camaraderie in there and there's like, you know, a feeling of like you're part of the team. Mm -hmm. And also having access to, having kind of an instant access to your, your peers or your supervisors helps a lot as well. Mm -hmm. and, I say. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I can't really give too much away. Well, I mean, I can't really say much about it because I've only really worked in a small studio mm -hmm. in the studio. But as far as I can tell, that is one of the big things. It's just the community, mm -hmm. and that does play quite a bit of. That, that plays. I say that does play a pretty big role when it comes to work in general. In that sense, like not having peers around you, like so one side that you're losing is like technically losing is like the motivation, like having other people working around you and then also the motivation to stop because it's the end of the day and everyone's going home. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, I lost the track of my own question. <laughs> Looking at your animation, one second. Um, yeah, so, okay, I remembered. So basically, uh, you have that, but also what you have is that it's easier to grow because you can ask to other people mm -hmm. and you can see how other people is tackling other things. Would you say, like, how would you tackle, like, how can you grow when you're just working from home alone? Like, are mm -hmm. you practicing uh, after work, like, with this, uh, with this animation we're seeing with the dog girl? Or... Yeah. Um, how would you mm. say you're trying to grow in that sense? If you're trying to, I mean, you're working every day. I'm pretty sure you're learning many things every day. I, that is a bit, I, I'd say that is a bit of a, I'm not sure if that's really true to a degree. I think that it's, it is tr like, you'll gain experience and you'll learn how to animate faster and better. But, but in terms, terms of learning, learning, I think the processes are a bit separate, at least for me. When it comes to learning things, I like to focus on the learning part as opposed to trying to also do work and then also learn at the same time. Mm, I'm not sure it's not, that's, Yeah, that's true. Like yeah. I was posing is that as if it is a separate thing. Like, okay, so you're working and then you have to practice mm -hmm. perspective. But actually you're learning from your own work and maybe yes you mm -hmm. would see other people's work and also learn from there but you, you're still learning from what you're doing so yeah that's a that's a very interesting that's a very interesting point like you're right <laughs> i believe yeah. yeah um when it comes to learning i do find that it is very important like it is for me at least and i guess if there are people who are like me out there 
I can't really focus on two things at the same time. I can definitely, and I have definitely applied some of the principles I've learned from the job in this uh, little animation. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it, I, I, it took, it took a bit of time before I realized, hey, I can use what I'm learning from work in my own stuff, mm -hmm. because uh, at least for me, I only saw the stuff I was learning for work as things that I need to apply to my work, not the stuff that I could apply to my own art. Mm, I see. I mean, after all, everything's connected. If you learn to make someone jump, now you know how to make someone jump in any case, whether mm -hmm. you're commissioned, it's your original work. Yeah. Well, well there was a bit of ego in that for, for, for me is just like, oh, I know how to do this. I don't, I can't, I can't use it in this thing, but you know, it's, uh, tell that part of yourself to shut up and just like use whatever you want to use. Mm -hmm. But, um, in terms of learning, in terms of getting better, um, you definitely do learn a lot on the job as well. And you can also, well, I mean, assuming that if you are working in the studio, you will learn a lot from your peers. Mm -hmm. Just by communicating and just by talking with each other and bouncing off ideas. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm lucky enough to be surrounded by a lot of very, very skilled people. So. Mm. Oh, I keep thinking about the. Because I'm. As you probably know, I'm trying to have my own studio as well. And we have like a. We have like a Discord channel actually. So mm -hmm. everyone can see like each other's work at a certain degree and like we're all like okay so I share the storyboard and then everyone can comment if they want or whatever actually usually for the storyboard I have like a meeting to show it like mm -hmm. once and talk through it and then of course like in the if anyone who's in that project they can talk about it like okay the animation team the background team whatever uh so mm -hmm. it's I'm trying to create that but something is I find it difficult like teleworking because Figo yeah. has different ways of communicating, so I cannot go push people to talk, obviously. Mm. Um, and then I feel uncomfortable when I'm trying to show people, like, like to showcase people like, okay, uh, I already corrected this, I want everyone to learn from this, now I need mm. to share someone's correction. So depending on how that person is sensitive to having had that exposed to the rest of the team, you know, so it's it's very tricky yeah. um, from your perspective since you're an animator and I'm, I'm assuming that you're also in a similar situation where you could share things within their, your same studio like how do you feel that like now that it's mm -hmm. digital like do you feel like sharing things like in a in a digital platform like okay there's a or chat <laughs> I'll just share this or not or like mm -hmm. yeah, yeah they, they definitely, definitely at least for what I'm working on, where I'm working right now, they definitely try and, you know, foster that sense of community. It's a valiant effort, but there is definitely something that's missing from not seeing someone face to face and, uh, you know, reading their body language or seeing immediately how they react to something. It's, um, it's, it's a bit difficult. And, you know, if, if someone doesn't know that you're struggling, like, if someone can't see that you're uncomfortable and struggling, then, and you're the type of person who isn't able to really raise their voice, mm -hmm. it can be pretty... Oh, I think it's cutting the audio. Hello? Oh? Hello? Hello? Okay, I think it's going back. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just saying that, um... If you're the type of person who struggles and, you know, they they can't really see that you're struggling uh, through a camera or through text, mm -hmm. then, yeah, it can be tough and it's it, it might take a lot out of you to try and reach out and, you know, speak, uh, well, I mean, just to to reach out to your supervisor and tell them I'm not doing too well could I get a bit of a break for the next episode or 
uh, do some less difficult scenes. It's hard. It's, it's, it's especially if you're not used to um, voicing your problems. Yeah. Since I see you have experienced that too, um, do you have advice both for the supervisor to facilitate that and for the people who's in a situation like that, that where it's 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 difficult to say something that is not exactly negative, but it's not like the brightest thing, like, hey, I need a break here, or hey, I need help in mm -hmm. this cut, or hey, I need more time, or simply, hey, I'm not comfortable with sharing, like, sharing all my reviews to everyone, like, how would you, like, can you give advice for these two positions, the supervisor and the people who's, like, trying to say something that's difficult for them? Yeah, I can try. <laughs> of course. Let, Let me think. think. Simon's YouTube. Mm. I think that I can use this. I'll speak, speak from an employee standpoint, standpoint first, mm -hmm. because I think that's the most comfortable for me to answer. Mm -hmm. um, but um, what really helped me to just kind of lighten my load and take a bit off my back was just being a a lot more honest with myself in terms of what I could handle. Mm -hmm. uh, like I mentioned before, I, me personally, I've been in situations where I just, I was trying to do too much or I was reaching a limit of, like, uh, reaching a point of burnout but still trying to perform to the usual degree that I can. But I had to be honest with myself at one point because it was reflecting in different parts of my life. I didn't really want to do my own personal projects or work on other things. And things were getting difficult, so I had to at one point just decide, like, if I'm having trouble and if things are getting difficult, then it's important to let your supervisor know. Mm-hmm because it's not sustainable in the long run. If you want to keep doing this, and if you'd like to still enjoy it, then you do need to make some time for yourself. And if that comes at the cost of, you know, um, telling your boss or telling your supervisor that you need to slow down a bit, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. And that actually applies uh, both in digital ways are and in person, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yeah. Absolutely. In, in terms, terms of supervisors, supervisors though... Yeah, it's a trickier question. <laughs> of course, yeah. like, if you can think of something. That's in my case, I need help in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I need to think... Let, let, well, let's think about this, because... If I'm comparing a supervisor to myself, there's really no other way to check and there, there's really no other way to, that I can think of other than just asking your employees, like, hey, is everything going all right? Or like, how's the pressure, like, how's, how's the pressure going? Um, it's hard to say. A lot, a lot of it comes, comes from both places. places. It can't just be one person, obviously. Mm -hmm. But because you're not facing someone in person, it is difficult to tell because you can't see how they're acting or how they're mm -hmm. behaving. Sometimes using your head like, hmm, that person hasn't been chatting for a while. Maybe something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but actually they're just busy with something else or mm -hmm. wherever. They just locked out and haven't tried to get in because, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's... Yeah. Completely out of like the scope of things. Yeah, that's true. Sure. Like being, what you were mentioning is like being more inviting and asking people. Like, I listen mm -hmm. to feedback. Like, so, mm -hmm. um, anytime tell me, and from time to time, it's everything fine. <laughs> yeah. Are you okay? Of, of course. course. You, you know, know there's. there's 
there's a thing for employees too though like we do want to do a good job and we want to get our scenes done properly and nicely so we don't want to disappoint our supervisors either of course of course like if there's a pressure there like you don't want to um yeah like you want to be honest mm. but you also want to be like the star employee of course so yeah of course of course it makes total sense yeah. So it is really tough for a supervisor to, it is really tough for a supervisor to check in on their employees and make sure they're doing okay. Because, I mean, I, I, I've been there before. I've, I've been sure, I like, I've, very early on in my career, I wanted to be like a star employee. So when I was struggling, I wouldn't say anything because, of course, I wanted to do well. I wanted to show up. I wanted to show that I can. Uh, handle, handle whatever, whatever work, work they brought me and that I could like mm -hmm. do it in a good enough amount of time and like good quality but that takes a toll mm -hmm. and of course and it's very important like it's, it's important to notice that you got into a very interesting conversation here I feel <laughs> <laughs> let me check the chat if there's some uh Worth mentioning questions again, everyone. Sure. Like, is the quietest interview we've ever had. Let's be honest. I'm I'm quite surprised. Like maybe more people will join in the recording, but hey, come in. This gives your chance. Your question, I will ask it. There's no many questions. Like the other question is like, um, where did Simon say he lives? Um, live uh, Canada. I live in I live in uh, around the Toronto area of Ontario, Canada. So can we thank Simon for being here in this time zone? Because it's quite <laughs> late for you. So thank you very much for joining us in our uh, usual. Oh, like I didn't me. ask you to come here at this time because I enjoy it <laughs> and I want to torture you or anything. I just because it's our weekly hour stream mm -hmm. that we usually have it at this time. Absolutely. So, so one second, I'm noticing things in the chat. So Eric says, same thing in video game studio, your manager can't read minds. You need to communicate mm. clearly how long uh, does something take. It's hard because we don't want them to feel we can't do our job. But honestly, yeah. honesty is more important. Yeah, If you can't yeah. deliver, that's even worse. That's so true. That's so true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It helps to balance things out too, you know? Like if one of your employees isn't doing as well, like the week of, you know, you can pass on the scenes and make it uh, easier for everyone. Yeah. It's not about trying to, it's not about trying to get the most, like just suck the juice out of an employee. It's about like getting the project done in a decent amount of time with good quality. And just as a reminder, everyone is also an employee at some point because in my case i'm also talking to the client that made the commission for example mm -hmm. right so i need to be able to sh to make sure that i will be able to deliver it so i need to talk to them yeah can you do this like of course no one has done that before that's why they am they're asking me to do it mm -hmm. right so i don't know if i'll be able to deliver and of course of course struggles happen not with your team but within yourself as well like putting things together like actually the thing i said i would do doesn't look great and i need to ask them if we can change it mm -hmm. and you're like one or two these things like how do i tackle I, how can i really solve it without talking to them and you're like marinating that but in at the end it's like okay if you had that idea that this doesn't work and you already know another way to make it you just lost two days just yeah talk to the person say them hey we thought Actually, can say a, a real example. We were thinking that a character would have like the hands in a specific color, and that hand. So it's like the body of the character is like whatever the color of skin it is for them, and then you have like a blue hand that like has like a gradation, and that's that's very tough to do. Okay, like gradations mm -hmm. and stuff. It's it takes time. It's a little, but it takes lots of time. And I was thinking, oh, yeah. instead of doing that, to express the same message, can we just do like a glow around that changes the color? So I was thinking of other ways that would be so much faster and in the end look good on screen. 
So it's like, remember that thing we discussed in Storyboard Time? Like, can I change it? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I think it will look great. And it did look great, by the way. It did look great. Mm. So you always had like a gradation in black, and instead of changing to blue, uh, it just like disappeared. And it had like a full animation of disappearing, which actually looked much more cool now that I think of it. Mm -hmm. But it, it was tough to think, like, I, how how do I say that? Right? Like, yeah, I bet. Like, you, you have to be honest. You're so right. Like, you have to be honest with yourself. Like, okay, this, this will take you more time, and the production will not benefit from it if you don't speak up. Mm -hmm. So, so it true. Is, it, it's daunting. I don't know where that kind of comes from, honestly. Yeah, honest, like, like, um, what's his name? Like Eric said in the chat, that just like mm -hmm. honesty is very, very important. Honesty with your clients, honesty with your boss, but most of like honesty with yourself as well. It's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's necessary, I mm -hmm. think. Yep. So I'm liking this talk about uh, communication, let's be honest. So let me, th let me mm. think if we can actually go something. I can think of something that goes around it and also teleworking um, since it's our topic topic for today. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we're talking about like now some struggles about communication, right? Like with mm -hmm. uh, our uh, the production assistant or within even other employees. So what are the good things that you think that because you're from home, it's easier? to get things done like technically like not just because you're home and then you can rest or like because you don't have to travel there like what are other good things in terms of talking to people other than maybe not wearing like going in your pajamas and doing a chat <laughs> mm. like in terms of communication do you think that's that there are so many good like there are good points on working from home um yeah, I'd say so. I mean, in in the downside of not being able to see someone's body language in person, there's also an upside that you don't have to technically present your face or be there in person. So if you are a shy person, you can just uh, show up in like the chat form and just listen in on the conversation and reply yes or no whenever you need to. You don't mm -hmm. have to worry too much about having to, you know, um, be called up in front of the class and <laughs> ask questions. You're right. That's why people is not like he's afraid of phones when they are actually ringing. It's like, oh my god, do I have to speak? Yeah. <laughs> Can I just like like get a message and reply whenever I want to? Mm -hmm. What's this thing? Please. I don't want to call. I don't want. <laughs> I want to be. I don't want to hear them. I don't want I'm, them to hear my voice. I'm, but, and I don't consider myself an extrovert. Yeah. I cannot even imagine. I'm like quite the extrovert. So like, why would I want to talk? <laughs> Whenever someone rings to me, you no. <laughs> like we call them. So yeah, that's a very a very nice one. Um, it gives you freedom, like from from time. Like okay, like I don't have to present myself in front of everyone. Just like yes or no, whatever I want. You could even be more productive. Like uh, there's a conversation going on, or you're listening to a recording of something oh, yeah. else at all from your team and you're working at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. That's a big one too. That's I know a, a couple of people, they definitely do that because when you have your, when you have like a brief or like a, a briefing or they, they show off the net, the episode and then, you know, talk about which scenes to do and what things to look out for. A lot of that is not going to be, a lot of those scenes aren't going to be yours. Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of time not wasted because you're obviously there listening to the mm -hmm. notes that are being given but that's a lot of there's also like a good amount of time spent just on stuff that isn't what you should be too concerned about mm -hmm. or like you could be doing like maybe you're you do have like more than 50 percent of the attention on the conversation of what you're actually saying so you're actually quite attentive but in the side you're yeah. like just like cleaning up which is something that you can then not autopilot, it still takes some skill, mm -hmm. obviously, but it's something that you can do very easily. Like, it's not the first time that I've been 
in a call with my mom sorry mom <laughs> and i'm thinking and painting at the same time and it's fine because i'm i you choose that thing that you can actually multitask and still be you know like decently productive and that actually more calm yeah because you're, you're doing something with your hands and whatever we have a very good question here in the chat so let me let uh tell it to you how sure do you find visual slash motion reference when you work at home? Do you film yourself as a reference? I do film myself as a reference. I was doing of that course, during my... Of course! <laughs> yeah. During my job at Furley over the summer last year, that was a big thing they encouraged. So I was filming a lot of my, uh, my own reference. It helps a lot. And... Yeah, no, definitely, one hundred percent recommend doing that. Yeah, if you're if you're learning or you're studying or you're beginning, I think it's incredibly useful. Yeah, filming yourself, video like a video, sorry, mirrors. I have like a huge mirror. I got like paint a second hand huge mirror next to me. Like I just need to like sometimes I'm working or even in a stream. I turn down, I look and do some poses and go back. And friends, <laughs> you know, if you can get some friends because. Um, oh, yeah. Now I'm replying myself, but I was in a situation where I was um, doing a, a shot and the position is quite simple. It's just uh, kneeling in the floor and like picking up imaginary mm. fruits from a bush. Okay. And I feel myself and I was trying to draw the character and the character is a male, right? It's like mm. a thin teenager. So, hey, I'm, I'm not doing, I don't know, an alien. It's somewhat close to me. I'm not doing a dog. Okay, so I, I can't do it, <laughs> right? But however, I couldn't right. get it right, and I noticed like my position for some reason it felt very feminine mm -hmm. because of my volumes. Even if when I try to imagine like no, like this is natural position, you're not feminine. Like I'm not wearing heels. I'm just picking up something from in front of me. Yeah. But again, I had to ask like to my husband like, sorry, can you just get a bit naked <laughs> and. <laughs> Pick some from this, like put in my hand, like pick something from this side, and because there's lots of love between us, and no, he doesn't <laughs> like it. <laughs> there's lots of love. He did it, and yeah. it improved so much the work. Actually, I decided to like trace his arm, like mm. and just save time. Like he does have a shape and proportions that fit a lot the character. Like mm. I was lucky enough to have that reference so film yourself film around you ask for permission yeah <laughs> but absolutely oh, absolutely if you um can. the other thing too about just like filming references like well i mean i act out my scenes like i when i when i'm trying to animate or trying to make something move like you know how you want something to move you know mm -hmm. how you want something to act so you have that added bonus of not just trying to pull it out from your head and make it happen on yeah. the screen. Yeah, sometimes you don't even have to film it. You just have to move mm. and leave it. Or like, you're like, oh, I'm drawing this. It doesn't feel right. Okay, you stand up and move. It's like, oh, it's because the weight is in the other leg. Because they're <laughs> angry. Or, you know, like, there's something that you are missing that when you do it yourself, you get. Like, you don't even need a video. If, if anyone, like, I don't know, so I have a feeling, like, if, if my family, like, they took a peek at me when I'm animating, I just, they'd see me, like, shake my head a little bit or just gesture in some way to myself. They'd find it very strange, but it helps a lot. A lot. I mean, I can't even recall the times that people have told me, like, are you okay? Because I was frowning my... <laughs> I was like so angry drawing something it's like I'm not angry yeah. I'm just like in the mood of the character right mm -hmm. like sometimes on screen like on the live stream I have to say by the way I'll start making faces now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everything's fine <laughs> but you get into character and it helps yeah. a lot it helps a lot well well disclaimer here we were animating a very anxious guy for months well, not for months, but for weeks. And it was so stressing to get into character. <laughs> I'm, oh man, I bet. <laughs> because the character was like this, 
sort of. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're seeing the video of this, but like heads in the hands in the head, struggling, looking down, and I would like do that position again. And sort of you, you're animating mm -hmm. that, so you're seeing the drawing, you're doing it yourself. So at some point, you have to take yourself away from the character, and enjoy life. It doesn't make sense, but yeah, that's a very specific true. play, like case. But as you were saying, like filming. It's yeah. so good for that, for like living it. 100% recommend that. Do some rotoscoping as well, just to like try it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Made so much sense. Would you recommend acting, like acting classes or learning from acting mm -hmm. <laughs> to, become, to be a good animator? That's a random question from me. I don't think it could really hurt to try and learn some acting. I think it depends really. Say maybe try improv a bit more too. Um, I haven't really done much acting or practiced much before in the past so I can't really say much for that. Mm -hmm. I do have a... Sorry, I, yeah. I'd like to... Sorry? No, 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 please continue. Oh, no. There's a, there's a tiny just... lag. So I oh, often okay. interrupt you. But I thought okay, it was, that's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't done any acting myself, but I do like to think I have a decent sense of acting. Um, just like internally, hmm. but acting, I think, is like a great idea to just to try it out. Hmm. Improv, I hear. I, hmm. I said that before. I've said it again, but like. Me personally, I do like improv quite a bit. I think it, 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 because it forces you to quickly get into a character mindset. Mm -hmm. Also, like different character mindsets, really quickly. And the way they move and the way they work is like they have to. I mean, the actions and like just like the character themselves are very broad, kind of like caricatures of what someone is doing. Yeah, you know. And in that, it's... you would go before and after on the screen, in the storyboard. Mm -hmm. Often when I do it, I'm trying to do like the full scene. If that makes sense, like acting to actually get into the character mm -hmm. and get right the movement oh, yeah. for, continui for continuity and I don't know, to get there. And it's, it's yeah. something I've been also thinking like how acting would benefit, but I, I'm having more and more this um, impression like this idea that because we're animators and we're interested in about how things move how mm. things are felt and so on even if we are not learning to act by ourselves we always have an observing eye oh, yeah. towards that Absolutely. so that's why we consider ourselves like good actors if that makes sense even if we haven't studied it because that's something we've always kept in our mind like, sure. how does that work not just when you see like a I don't know, like a a cloak like flying around that you have the eye to look at that with the animator eye you also see people crying in a mm -hmm. in a movie and be like oh look notice this the chin is going up and doing all these things you know like we have this mm -hmm. eye that then we put in ourselves like we mirror that when we act because we always, we were observing it that is a big thing, is mirroring. You definitely... Yeah, no, I'd say for sure. Um, you watch enough films and you watch enough animation, you notice some things that like feel... They're more personal touches, but they do feel better to you. And you then try and incorporate that in your own stuff. Mm -hmm. And you cannot stop your eye from observing either. Mm -hmm. There's no break for that. <laughs> No, unfortunately not. <laughs> In another way. Sometimes um, I find myself like on the street and I see something, for example, today. There were like cherry blossoms falling mm. beautifully. And then there was, and most of them are now in the floor. And there was a gasp of wind, like just putting them all up. And it was mm. beautiful. But what I was thinking is like, I want to never animate that. <laughs> I'll never animate that. Like all these tiny particles, like... Oh, that's what they have particle effects for. It's like, nope. <laughs> this is beautiful, and I'm sure that doing it hand round will look even more beautiful, but no. <laughs> and the scene was beautiful, but I was like, what a nightmare. 
Mm. Yeah, I think about that every time I see a crowd scene. <sighs> I do that. Oh, by the way, like, personal question, what do you like to animate the most? What are your fun things to do? Hmm. Mm. I need to think about that. You don't have to pick one, like, don't, don't worry. Just... Fun things that I like to animate. Yeah. Well, that they are fun to you, of course. Yeah, you know, I think... Hmm. I think character acting, for the most part, is something that I really like to animate. Mm -hmm. But, in a broader sense, I don't... I don't think there's specifically one thing that I like to animate a lot. It's more just like in context. I like to tackle scenes that have some good emotion in them. I guess emotional scenes are just like... um. It really depends on the project, actually. That's cool. And just what, what is, what is the purpose of the animation? What is it being used for? So, I'd like to try and animate some more calming things, and ideally that would calm me down as well. Mm hmm I say also quite like just to go deeper. Um, you're you really are into character animation. That's the thing you're sharing the most. Mm -hmm. So if you now tell me effects, I will be surprised. For example, like F Aubrey. Right. <laughs> I, I am it. interested in them. Oh. Yeah. Okay, it's... a question. <laughs> Sorry? No, I was about to read the question in the chat. Like, what are you best at, Simon? What is your specialty? My specialty? Chan chan. Oh. I don't know if I can answer that, honestly. Attacking the confidence cycle. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> what is my... What am I the best at animating? Emotions are hard to thing to animate. I agree, but to be honest, I'm with you here. I love animating emotions. Mm -hmm. like, I'm, I'm reading the chat as well. Yeah. But yeah, no, your, your question, it. Simon. What are you good at? Or according to your supervisors, maybe what do they tell you you're good at, or keep calling you to do that type of scene, or? My supervisor keeps telling me that I do great stuff. <laughs> so it's That's hard awesome. to tell. <laughs> Sounds um, like you're a good man to have. You're a good I man guess... to have in a project. Nice. Yep. I, I guess it with would muscle. be like <laughs> I guess depending on what my supervisor keeps putting me on, like scene wise, it's characters interacting with each other. Mm. Or just like in terms in terms more of dialogue, I suppose. Mm, that's a good one. And that's not easy. That doesn't sound like easy. It's not something I've been doing very often actually. Yeah, it, it, it has it it's rewarding when you do it nicely, but I like it I like we I mean I've talked about we talked about it before, but it has been taking its toll on me. Mm -hmm. I could do with a bit of a I could do with a bit of a break. And luckily the current episode I'm working on has um a bit more emotional stuff in there, so get to play So for you a break is having like only one character in a scene or in a break or for you having a break it's having some to do something that really motivates you which would be for example like two characters interacting what's mm. a break for you i think a break for me is probably that like you said just one character in a scene acting and having good having good emotion and good character in that scene so one character drama sounds good yeah. <laughs> it, it's a lot easier to handle than multiple, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I was thinking, like, yes, I actually did it. Like, I had some things with, like, one dragon, one man, one guy, and two uh, unidentified species 
of mm -hmm. fire guys and that was not that was very nice to see after mm -hmm. but that was not a break no not at all not a i bet <laughs> it's always fun it's it's great to do you know you like to see your characters interacting with another and you like to do a good job on that but mm -hmm. it is taxing there's a yeah. lot to handle there's a lot to because you can't just have everyone be still all the time otherwise no. it'll seem like dead like and the, the other timing characters. of the what we were talking about yeah. like the acting now the acting needs to fit the other characters yeah. right like you don't have like the timing of when one looks to each <clears throat> to one another for example and mm -hmm. all that you need to like okay you do one you animate that one more or less roughly then you act the other and you notice that nobody's thinking like with a head in the with a hand in the head too long and so on so mm -hmm. Oh, hey, we're yeah, because, having more people joining now that it's sort of the end. I think it's because it's getting a bit later, but that's okay. I can, I'm still, I'm still here. So. <laughs> You're asking if you have a YouTube channel and also how far down the rabbit hole have you fallen? Oh, that, whoa. <laughs> that's quite uh, a question. I'm showing uh, Simon's channel, by the way. Yeah, I do have a chat. YouTube channel, same one as my uh, Twitter handle. Not much uploaded there, really, because I haven't everything. really made any long-form <laughs> content. And in terms of how far down the rabbit hole I've gone... Um, there you go. Make sure it's everything yeah. on YouTube. Oh, wait. That... Oh, yeah, no, that's mine. How far down the rabbit hole I've gone... Yes. I I would I would quote something, but it is also late, so like I can't really. Um, did you did you did you catch Hachima's stream? She's back. I'm really happy to see her again. By the way, however, yeah. Craig. That that should answer that question. Mm -hmm. All right. So oh, this has been such a good a good conversation. Yeah, I, I need to thank everyone and thank you everyone who's here. I've been reading all the comments. I couldn't uh, just mention everyone as I usually do because we were in the middle of a like conversation and questions, of course. Um, <laughs> so pretty far, huh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty far. It started with the ba it started with the band aids and then it just rolled down, rolled down from there <laughs> okay um i got in blank wait okay so there's a couple of questions that i haven't asked that are more also about yourself um sure you've been doing uh what i see is like key animation mostly even like layout if you want to say in that part of the, the process what's your goal though like long term if any mm -hmm. Long term, I think is like everyone. I I I'd like to work for myself or work on projects that I would like to work on. Mm -hmm. Um. What does that look like? like? <laughs> well, that looks like me being able to spend a bit of time on my own projects, trying a couple different mediums. I'd like to try stop motion a bit more. I'd like to learn. 3D a bit more as well, and just making content that I enjoy watching myself. Um, of course, also long term, you know, it really depends on how things shake up and how things shape up for me, and if I can manage to keep it going well enough. Um, there's it, I, I've been working since before school's ended, so I kind of am in desperate need for a break. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's like, it's but, more recent, but... Um, no, I mean, yeah. what's, what's your goal would be also like, okay, I'm working on my own thing, but I also have a break every month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I would, I would, yeah, working for myself, uh, or working on projects that I believe in. Mm -hmm. It's a big one, actually. It's just projects that I have, like, a lot of 
a, a good investment in. Um, mm -hmm. And also just hopefully living a life where I spend a good amount of time taking care of myself and people around me as opposed to constantly working. Mm -hmm. You do sound to me like very close to burnout, if I might say that. <laughs> so does it does it I, sound like it? I need to apologize for asking you to call me in like at is it like twelve and midnight now for you maybe? It, it's midnight, but I usually mm. go to sleep around now. Okay. Or oh dear. Later. I'm so sorry. You do sound no. like you you no, don't you sound agree. like you're terrible at right now, like health like and so on. You sound fine. But there's mm -hmm. a bit like some sentences you said tell me that yeah. you need the weekend off at least. <laughs> I would I like recognize a bit myself more than, there. A bit more than a weekend if I if I'm honest. If I'm completely honest. Oh dear. Alright, so last call for questions. We would like to leave uh, let Simon go to sleep, but so grateful that he's here I won't want to let him go just yet. Mm. Uh, Meanwhile, I, there's a question I was asked, like, where can we see you and your work next? But I already shared that on the chat. So we'll be on Twitter, and I will probably be uploading this project to YouTube when it is finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know now, um, Twitter and YouTube. And meanwhile, we wait for maybe one last question. I will. I'm curious now because you sound like a great guy and you are very skilled. So Aww. I'm curious about what are the type of projects you like working in because maybe I will ask you like, do you want to work with us <clears throat> at some point? So. <laughs> oh. Interesting. Um, kind of projects that I like to work with. Like, is there a genre, for example, or some? let's say, things that are inside the type of animation. You already mentioned like emotional, like emotions. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty, that's pretty narrowing. That's cool. Yeah. Emotions, I think that, that, yeah, no, that is a big one. Um, genres. Maybe it's just me, be maybe it's just me because I'm like tired and stressed out and close to burning out but like I I'm um, trying to like I've been getting into a lot of like series of where things are just kind of calm relaxed they, mm. they have a relaxed kind of feeling um, there was I... a name for it I forget the name for her. the kind of um... like you mean that the animation like the context inside the animation is calm like yeah. for example, not animating a fight, but you're animating someone just playing. I'm animating someone just playing. I'm animating people just kind of living a relaxed life. Oh, that's <laughs> because nice. I... I see, I see. Yeah. But also, you know, I like to show... I like to show characters. I think since I was young, actually, it's just like... I, I like to show... Um, a living person. Uh, it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain. Okay, so it's, um... I get it. I will never ask you to do zombies. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean if they're if they're relaxing I'm around, making... if they're lounging around and they like have their own it. preferences, that's fine. All right, so I'm seeing no questions. Actually, I'm getting something in the chat that I'm not sure if it's a compliment or <laughs> something sneaky. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it. But yeah, actually, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, on Discord. Um, all right, so thank you, everyone. And <laughs> we'll, we'll be closing for today. Uh, and yeah. I'm also, I, I mean, it's just one in the midday for me, but somehow my brain is not around there. It takes energy <laughs> to keep showing things on screen, reading the chat, checking the questions. I understand what you're saying because I would say that I, this was not my best conversation with you. Like it was because it's one of our first, but I mm -hmm. was not as attentive and good listener as you deserve, to be honest, because oh, that I was fine. 
are around the place. So if some days we're talking and I ask you something that I actually I ask you on the interview and we have the answer recorded, I ask you for forgiveness already because I was <laughs> there somehow. <clears throat> oh. Okay, so wait. that's not right. <laughs> no, I really enjoy. <laughs> I, I need to I enjoyed the conversation. It was helpful, you know. It let me vent a bit about like the frustrations. I get to talk a bit more about like um, just balance and figuring things out. If it helps someone, then that makes me happy. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to hear that. And to reply the chat, uh, what worker see like PA is production assistant, and that's the person giving work twenty meters. By the way. <clears throat> And um, it's, I mean, it's not a Japanese word, but it's a word used in the Japanese industry. So, <clears throat> and the chat disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. It's Perfect so timing. Anyway, so people. yeah, I'll, I'll now let you go. Thank you very much again. <laughs> I mean, I'll let you go and then I'll say goodbye to everyone in the, in the chat. But of course we're, we're in contact in, in Discord now. Um, yeah, sure thing. And that was well, thank you very much for talking with me. I'm very happy to be here, Maru. It was very, very nice to talk with you. Oh, thank you. See, I was so nervous, but then it's always fine. <laughs> That's how it always ends up. No, it was great. Thank you very much. Thank you very I was much. glad to be here. Hmm? I was very happy to be here. Oh, thank you. Right. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll hang off English, thank you. Um, goodbye. Goodbye. <clears throat> All right, so now it's uh, just me. My brain has more percentage of time for the chat, more percentage of energy for the chat. And we can see that that's not true. Maybe it just got out in my brain. I don't know what I'm saying. Let me see the chat with everyone and let me say hi to everyone. Like Bear Creek, Zionist, Muzzle, thank you for being here. Uh, Eric, you are here as well. We had some of our regulars and like Josh, hello. Um, Azure as well. Ah, it was nice. We have some board. Uh, yeah, I want. That's what I was thinking. Thank you. Okay. I see, I see, I see. Okay, so I think that would be it for uh, this time. Next week we will have a stream again. It will not be an interview. I believe we could get one like that. I'm talking with someone that I still don't know if we will make it to work it out or not. Let me put this. So uh, I'm talking with someone else where with who we might make an interview or not because we're, we're having struggles to like match the time. So maybe it will not happen, but it could happen next week. Uh, but anyway, it should be there as always. Next week will be the 7th of April. And I'm thinking, but I cannot promise to make a long stream for my birthday. That's the 12th of April. It might be Sunday evening for some of you and Monday, I don't know, maybe Sunday, Monday, depending on where you are. But what do you think, like maybe solve it together because it's a, it's a working day, so I will not be uh, meeting other people in that day. I was thinking like maybe we could, I could do the thing with that I like, which is anime to draw or talk to our friends here. So that would be nice. And I'm changing my calendar. And I think that's it. My brain will not accept much more um, sophisticated conversations right now. So just thank you everyone again. Remember that this recording will keep on YouTube um, for this interview. So if you are watching it on Twitch, it will stay there for a while. I will not delete it, but I believe Twitch deletes videos that are a couple weeks old for some reason. I, I don't know how it works. Um, so yeah, check it on YouTube. It was super nice to have Simon. You notice me a bit nervous. We haven't been talking a lot before I asked to interview him actually. So it was getting to know him with you almost. So it's been really great. So thank you everyone for giving me the excuse to interview him because I knew that you could be interested. And that's it. Uh, goodbye and see you hopefully next week. Have a lovely day. Oh, and I may do surprise a surprise stream this Thursday, Friday, depending on your time zone, but I will not promise because it really depends on some work I'm doing. So it depends, but I may be 
up again doing what we usually do which is me uh, just talking with you replying to questions while while we um <clears throat> while animating right and now i hope i think that's it goodbye and have a lovely day